All right, I'm going to cut some leaves off of Arabidopsis right here for a genomic DNA extraction. We need a genomic DNA to clone some genes promoters from. So here's a Arabidopsis plants. And we could we could get DNA from any one of these plants. We don't need we need very little um, leaf tissue, or we could use a lot of leaf tissue. In this case, I'm going to use a lot of leaf tissue. I'm going to use an entire leaf. Carefully stick this into this little tube here. Got scissors to push it in a little bit. We'll bring that up to the lab to extract DNA from it. Are you sure? We'll bring this up to the lab to extract DNA from it. Now that we're back in the lab, I'm going to add our 2x CTAB buffer to our piece of leaf. And even though I used a lot of leaf, and I don't really need to do this, I'm going to add linear polyacrylamide anyway, one microliter of linear polyacrylamide. Linear polyacrylamide is particularly useful if you're going to use um, very minute pieces of plant. It, get, it will ensure that we get a pellet at the end of this DNA extraction. So um, we can feel confident that we didn't lose our DNA. Once that's all in the tube, I'm going to take our pestle and I'm going to just grind. Grind until it's homogeneous. It doesn't need to be so glue. If you have trouble to keep your stuff in there, you have to work this. The more you grind, the more DNA you'll get. And if you want to get a, if you really want to get all the DNA um, that you can out of a tissue, like say it's precious, you would want to freeze this tissue in liquid nitrogen first, then grind it. It becomes very easy to get a really a powdered plant material. Yeah, that's good enough. I used a lot of leaf, so I'll have a lot of genomic DNA for um, a number of different clonings. Close that up, and I'm going to take a Kim wipe. I'm going to wipe it off because I've got some bubbles on the outside. I'm going to just give this a real brief spin down so that it's on the bottom of that tube. Show it to you. Now everything is on the bottom. It's super green because again, like I said, I'm trying to get a lot of genomic DNA. We're going to heat this at 65 degrees for 10 minutes. You can go longer. Come back to you after the 10 minutes is over. All right, so our 10 minutes are up. The C tab has this dissociated the nucleoproteins on the DNA. Um, so now we have to add an equal volume of chloroform for our CTAP. We don't want this to get, we don't want this to be real hot, so we might want to give it a, a moment to cool down. So that easy way to let that cool down is just open the lid and let it sit there for a moment. Uh, I could feel by my hands it's not it's not terribly hot because I'm using a fairly small volume. Definitely want to work with chloroform in the fume hood. It's carcinogenic. It can also make you pass out if you drink, if you inhale too much of it.
And then now we now we need to homogenize this. So we'll go back to the little lab bench. Homogenize that by shaking. So it looks like a milky uh, milky substance. Milky green substance for plant material. Okay. Put it in our centrifuge. Spin for one minute to separate the phases. All right, our spin is done. You can see that we've separated phases. On the bottom, we got um, the green chlorophyll pigments and stuff in the chloroform phase, and then we have um, at the interface we have a whole bunch of plant material, as you can see there. Okay. We want to take that upper aqueous phase put it in a new tube. You usually get a little bit less liquid than you started with, so whatever whatever C tab you started with, you'll probably get a little bit less than that. And we really don't want to take any of the interface. So it's better to be it's better to to um, leave a little bit of stuff behind than it is to um, be greedy. Can you show the tube? So we have a pretty clear liquid. It does have a little bit of greenish color here. Now we're going to add isopropanol to it. Isopropanol will precipitate both the DNA and that linear acrylamide. Genomic DNA we like to mix by shaking, gentle shaking, not by necessarily vortexing, because it's so big that it can actually um, shear and separate a little bit, uh, break up a little bit. Uh, come back to our centrifuge, and we'll give it a five minute, five minute spin at max speed. All right, so our, our spin is done. Our DNA is now precipitated on the bottom. And because I, I started with such a large amount of DNA or uh, plant material, you can actually see a pellet there. I'm not sure that'll show up on the camera, but there is a pellet there. That'll be, of course, due to um, linear acrylamide and, um, and DNA. We're going to get rid of that. Supernatant. Carefully by cutting it away. And then I'm going to wash this with ethanol. 70% ethanol. Can you show the tube? So here, have the tube. It's not easy to see that pellet. It'll become much easier to see the pellet once you have 70% ethanol. In a lot of cases, you're not going to see any pellet with isopropanol because isopropanol makes a um, pellet very, fairly clear. And when you have a small pellet, it'll look kind of like um, maybe invisible or like jelly. A clear jelly. And once we add 70% ethanol, the pellet becomes even more white. So we want to just mix this a few times like that. Now you can see this pellet. Let's put it put it against the black background. Maybe you can see that the pellet has actually now dislodged from the wall. There, you can see that. So we're going to just give this a brief spin. Seconds. A quick spin is done just to make sure the pellet is, you know, toward the bottom of the tube and attached again. So you can see there. 
I'm going to just go through the same. I'm going to dump this out carefully. Try to make sure our pellet doesn't doesn't fly out. So I can easily see it. And I'm going to come to the centrifuge here, and I'm going to give it a five second spin. just to get the ethanol to the bottom of the tube. We're going to pipette out the, the, the remainder. I started with 500 microliters and I poured out that 500 microliters and this is what I have after spinning. I'm going to pipette slowly. And I'm going to pipette on the opposite side of the tube there where the pellet is. Pipetting slowly so that the ethanol stays together and we don't have any droplets of ethanol left here. If you have droplets of ethanol left in your tube, it will take longer for this to dry. You can see I don't have really any, any major ethanol droplets. And I just put this on the bench on the side right here like this. Or we could do this and leave it in our tube rack. This maybe is the preferred way to just turn our tube rack. I'm going to let it dry for about a minute and then we'll add um, Tris buffer or TE buffer to it for longer term storage. Alright, our DNA is now dry enough. We don't want to over dry it. If you over dry genomic DNA, um, it may not go back into solution very easily. By drying on your bench, of course, you don't have a big risk of that. About a tiny amount of uh, a tiny amount of ethanol won't even hurt most of the downstream applications. I resuspend this by just adding the TE buffer directly to it. It's going to, that was a big pellet, so it's going to take a little bit for it to go into solution. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the vortex on a very low speed so that it just moves. And the vortex. And we can also mix it by flicking it. This. And for genomic DNA, it's probably desirable with a big pellet like that to just let it sit for five or ten minutes and then repeat what I did here. Just a very gentle vortexing and a little bit of flicking and your DNA should be back in, in solution. That's it. Thank you for watching.